Malaysia Building Society, MBSB, says its chairman, Tan Sri Azlan Zainal, passed away today at the age of 72. Azlan was also the chairman of MRCB, EcoWorld International and YX Precious Metals, as well as a director in Kuala Lumpur, Kepung. The prominent figure was known for his stance towards governance, as exemplified in the 1MDB scandal. It was widely reported that Azlan was one of the only two directors in the State Development Fund who scrutinised the irregularities surrounding the 1MDB Petro-Saudi joint venture in 2009. The episode, which cost 1MDB 1.53 billion US dollars or 6.67 billion ringgit in missing funds, saw Aslan stepping down in protest on January 11, 2010, following the resignation of then 1MDB chairman Tan Sri Baki Saleh in October the year before. Aslan was also widely known for his stint as EPF CEO a position which he held for 12 years from 2001 to 2013. During his tenure, Aslan helped EPF recover its performance in the aftermath of the Asian financial crisis, with dividend payouts reaching a 13-year high of 6.15% in 2012 before his departure. From 2001 to 2013, EPF's investment assets grew from 187 billion ringgit to 590 billion ringgit, representing a compounded annual growth rate of 10%. Malaysia may consider halting exports to the EU in retaliation for the trade bloc's new deforestation regulation. Deputy PM and Minister of Plantation and Commodities, Dato Sri Fadila Yusuf, said this is one of the country's options to deal with the EU's negative palm oil campaign that has been turned up a notch in recent years. He was speaking at the Palm Oil Economic Review and Outlook Seminar 2023 today. He said Malaysia will involve Indonesia in the discussion in his upcoming work visit to the country at end January. Europe is the third largest importer of Malaysian palm oil, accounting for 9% of total exports of the commodity. According to the proposed deforestation regulation, six commodities, palm oil, cattle, wood, soy, cocoa and coffee, and their derivative products, which were grown or raised on land that was subjected to deforestation or forest degradation, will be banned from entering the EU market after the regulation is passed. Indonesia and Malaysia are the world's two largest palm oil producers, accounting for over 80% of global supply. Putrajaya and political analyst Abdul Razak Baginda have filed their respective notices of appeal after they were found liable by the Shah Alam High Court for the death of Mongolian translator Altan Tuya Sharibu. Senior Federal Counsel Shamsul Bol Hassan and lawyer Sangit Kortio, who is representing Altan Tuya's family, separately confirmed the filings. On December 16, 2022, the Shah Alam High Court ruled former police officers Azila Hadri and Cyril Azhar Umar, the government and Abdul Raza were liable for Altan Tuya's death and ordered them to jointly pay 5 million ringgit in compensation to the family. They were also ordered to pay costs of 25,000 ringgit each. Altan Tuya was killed between 10 pm on October 18, 2006, and October 19, 2006, in Punja Alam, Slango. Azilah and Cyril were found guilty of the murder, while Abdul Raza was acquitted without his defense being called. However, the court ruled that the political analyst is still legally responsible for her death since it was he who had sought the aid of Azila and Cyril to deal with Altan Tuya and there was no reasonable motive for the duo to kill her. Johor-based oil palm planter and property developer Han Len Kop is buying a plantation outfit that owns 4,052.6 acres of plantation land in Rompin Pahang from textile giant Jekyll Group for 54.7 million ringgit. The announcement confirms a report by TheEdgeMarkets.com citing sources that Jekyll Group is injecting an asset with 4,000-acre agriculture land into Hanlen and will emerge as one of the group's substantial shares. 
shareholders. Under the deal, Hanlen will acquire 100% stake in Almal Resources by issuing 31.27 million new shares at 70 cents apiece to fund 40% of the acquisition price, equivalent to 21.9 million ringgit, while the remaining 32.8 million ringgit will be funded by cash. As at end September 2022, Hanlen's cash and bank balances stood at 18.68 million ringgit, down from 25.05 million ringgit as at end 2021. Upon completion of the deal, Jackal Holdings COO Datuk Muhammad Nizam Muhammad will emerge as a substantial shareholder in Hanlen with a 5.5% stake. This came less than two weeks after Jackal injected 67.1 million ringgit via private placement into another public listed firm, Sci Park Resources, to become the latter's single largest shareholder with a 27.33% stake. Serba Dynamic Holdings has finally submitted its annual report for FY22. Together with its audited consolidated financial statements for the fiscal year after much delay since October 31, 2022, the financially distressed oil and gas services provider saw its share trade suspended on December 23, 2022, following its failure to submit the annual report by the extended deadline of December 15, 2022. In the document, its chairman, Dato Abdul Qadir Sahib, said the group will focus on financial health and continually transform its business models to cater to global changes in the energy industry as new energies slowly replace fossil fuel. It will also ensure that it continuously attracts, trains and retains employees by demonstrating good culture and offering competitive pay with advancement opportunities. Group MD and CEO Datuk Dr. Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah, meanwhile, said the PN17 company will formulate a plan to regularise its financial condition in about one month. He gave his assurance the company will be able to get back on track and continue to rebuild to greater heights. 